so this is the topic uh, the theory part uh, was uh, done last day on the last side, thursday so today we are going to complete uh, the numerical part of it that is uh, whatever uh, numerical calculations and all those things are there related to a second order transient response uh, that we are going to see today so questions uh, can be asked in two ways that is uh, what is the transient response and what are the characteristics so in that case uh, mainly you have to explain the four different types of responses that is under damp over damp critical damp and uh, undamped response and after that uh, some specific numerical can be asked so i would request you to have a calculator with you because uh, these are the numericals uh, which are definitely asked in the exams and they are not difficult but uh, only thing is we should get accustomed with it that is how to do the calculations and all uh, that we are supposed to do so i think this uh, document is visible to you right yes sir so the same document was uploaded actually in a 19th lecture so you are already having the document so this is the first order system i am uh, showing first so r and c system you can find out what is the transfer function of it it is 1 minus e to minus t by tau so all the processes are uh, shown to you above so output is taken across capacitor input is given to rc and uh, v output t is equal to 1 minus e to minus t by tau and tau is equal to r into c that we know uh, this is without any kind of uh, initial uh, voltage stored in the capacitor now this is a uh, time constant definition all these things so i had explained all these things last day to you now uh, after this first order system now let us directly go to the second order system because that is mainly our topic for today and for second order system response also we know how to find the transfer function so there are three uh, components in the system r l and c so r is remaining as r l becomes ls uh, in uh, laplace domain because transfer function we find in laplace domain and c becomes 1 by cs so this is the equation v in is equal to r plus ls plus 1 by cs into is so if i ask a uh, loop equation in laplace domain so r into is is the voltage developed across resistor uh, in time domain it is l into dit by dt uh, but in laplace domain it is ls into is so because of this differentiation there is a s multiplication coming with l so uh, inductive voltage in laplace domain is ls into is and similarly the c becomes 1 by cs so capacitive voltage in laplace domain is 1 by cs into is so all these three voltages you add so what we are getting is a ratio between is and ps so v in and is the relationship we know so v in is equal to r plus ls plus 1 by cs into is so this is the input voltage in the loop Output voltage is generally taken across capacitor. Uh, if nothing is mentioned, you can take output voltage across capacitor only. So that is 1 by Cs into Is. Now I am asking you to find transfer function because if we want to find transfer function, means actually we are trying to find out output divided by input. So V output by Vn is 1 by Cs into Is and R plus Ls plus 1 by Cs into Is. So ISI is just cancelled. Then it becomes 1 by Cs divided by R plus Ls plus 1 by Cs. Now, up till this point, there is no doubt. After that, uh, multiply uh, numerator and denominator with CS. So now denominator is becoming LCS square plus RCS plus 1, and numerator is becoming 1. But I told you that uh, the order of the system is 2 because there are two energy storing elements, that is uh, L and C. And whatever is the highest uh, degree of S, actually that part, S square, it has to be uh, kept as coefficient of 1. So this LC square, I want actually this LC square to be written as S square. That means numerator and denominator I have to divide by LC. So finally, V output by V input transfer function will become 1 by LC divided by A square plus R by LS plus 1 by LC. Very important formula. Uh, same thing we have found in uh, module 1 also when we had found out the RLC system transfer function. The same uh, formula or a same transfer function was derived. Uh, another thing we had done, that is the MBK system, that is MS square plus BS plus K. And then we divided numerator and denominator with M. Okay, so for MBK system and for uh, RLC system, the same process we are following. And uh, it has to be compared with a standard second order transfer function. So I uh, told you last day, 
that is whenever it is a second order system there are only two design parameters one is omega n that is uh, 1 by root lc and another is zeta that is r by 2 root under of c by l so that comes from these two formulas so 1 by lc divided by s square plus r by ls plus 1 by lc this is actually the transfer function of rlc system second order and that we have to compare with the second order standard uh, transfer function so for any system let it be electrical let it be mechanical let it be electronic pneumatic hydraulic any second order system will be having mainly two parameters one is omega n another is zeta and this cs by rs so this is called a standard second order response not response actually this is standard second order system transfer function okay and that is given in terms of the system parameters so system parameter in case of first order system is tau system order in case of second order system is omega n and zeta so omega n square divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square this is actually the generalized so this is very important word generalized transfer function of second order system and there are two parameters you can find here so s is actually uh, independent parameter so s is actually the uh, complex frequency we know this is a laplace frequency uh, omega n and zeta they are actually the uh, system parameters so omega n and zeta they will be given in terms of r l and c so if i change l and c you will find omega n will change because omega n is uh, 1 by root lc i have written it below so now if you compare this okay so omega n square uh, numerator and here 1 by lc so if you compare these two transfer function you will find that omega n square is equal to 1 by lc and omega n is equal to 1 by root lc same thing you can find out the constant term in the denominator so denominator constant term is omega n square denominator constant term is 1 by lc so you just have to compare uh, component by component these two equations so in that case you will be finding as omega n square is equal to 1 by lc that is omega n is equal to 1 by root lc this is called as undamped uh, natural frequency undamped natural frequency means whenever zeta is equal to 0 even if you are giving a step input you will find that the circuit is generating some kind of oscillation this is a very peculiar factor because i am not giving any kind of sinusoidal input or anything i am just setting up what is the value of l what is the value of c and just with step input i am getting a oscillatory output so all these things we can see in the lab just give a dc and you will find that depending on the l and c value in the tank circuit or rlc circuit it is producing some kind of sinusoidal waveform so that is actually is uh, found out by this method and uh, this is actually an undamped response okay so next is uh, second term okay so what is the uh, vina are you there so what is the uh, coefficient of s in the above equation so s square plus r by l s plus 1 by lc what is the coefficient of s term r by l and what is the coefficient of s term in the below equation s square it's plus 2 n. zeta n. correct so these two has to be compared that means 2 zeta omega n is equal to r by l yes okay yes, sir. 2 zeta omega n is equal to r by l like we have done omega n square is equal to 1 by lc for the so that derivation we are not looking into it, no, sir. That derivation we are not looking into it. No. The derivation is not coming in the exam. We don't ask derivation. Mainly the theory. Uh, theory I can ask that is uh, what are the different types of uh, derivation means the above derivation wherever it is coming from. Uh, now this uh, comparable with this uh, I can do this. Understand? Yeah, this this uh, this loop equation and all you have already done in uh, if v analogy and all. So this is only three four lines. Okay, and after that you have to come to 1 by LC S square plus R by LS plus 1 by LC. And then you have to say that for any standard second order system, the generalized transfer function is omega N square plus S square to zero omega N S plus omega N square. So this you have to just take it from here. Any any mechanic, any second order system. So there are different types of system, but any second order system will have this uh, generalized equation. So you have to compare these two. And if you are just comparing 2 zeta omega n is equal to r by l or omega n is equal to 1 by root lc. So that means 2 zeta is equal to root lc into r by l. Uh, because 1 by uh, root lc you have to take in the right side. So it will become root lc into r by l. So if you just do that from there zeta you will find as r by 2 into root root of c by l. So just could try karo. Here only uh, omega n you substitute 1 by root lc. So 2 zeta into 1 by root lc is equal to r by l. From there find what is the value of zeta. 
So that zeta value will find as R by 2 root under of C by L. So from here actually coming four cases. If you are putting R is equal to 0, you will find zeta is equal to 0. That means for any RLC circuit, when resistance value you are making as 0, we will find that uh, there will be no damping. No damping means gain is maximum. System will start oscillating. Okay, then we are increasing R value a little bit. Suppose we are keeping R value as around 0.6 ohm, let's say. Okay, R value we are keeping as 0.6 ohm. C is equal to 1 farad, L is equal to 1 Henry. That means root C by L is equal to 1. And R is equal to 0.6 ohm. That means zeta will become 0.6 by 2. That is 0.3 ohm. It's very easy actually. Just you have to remember these two formulas. When zeta is equal to 0.3 means it is under damped condition. Condition for under damping is zeta is in between 0 to 1. At that time you will be finding that it will be producing some kind of uh, uh, oscillation like this. Okay, so in the there are four diagrams I told you. So the top left diagram this is the under damped response, and the bottom right diagram this is the undamped response. Undamped means when R is equal to zero. Uh, zeta is equal to zero at that time it is going to show some kind of oscillation and this oscillation is given by omega n one by root lc and whenever r value is little more a little higher okay zeta we are finding as 0 0.3 uh, 0 0.3 means it is uh, going to oscillate first and that oscillation is going to die down after ts that is the settling time and it is going to produce output same as same so this is called as a damped oscillation and this damped oscillation is given by omega d and omega d is equal to omega n root under of 1 minus zeta square. And then again, keep on increasing the value of zeta. So in the same uh, equation, that is wherever zeta equation was there, it is now shown at the top uh, of this page. So zeta is equal to r by 2 root under of c by n. Suppose we are keeping r, is e r value is equal to 2, 2 ohm. Okay, and c and l we are keeping as 1. Okay, so in that case, r is equal to 2. So 2 by 2 is equal to 1 and C by L is equal to 1. So zeta value will be 1 in that case. So R is equal to 2, C is equal to 1, L is equal to 1. In that case, we will find that zeta value is going to be 1. In that case, that will be a critically damped uh, response and critically damped response is shown in the top right. Okay. So this response is almost equal to uh, unit step response. Okay, So this is almost going to uh, replicate unit step response, fast response. Okay, and then further you are increasing the R value quite high. So suppose R value is 10 ohm or something. And zeta is equal to 10 by 2 is equal to 5. C by L is equal to 1. So in that case, you are going to get an overdamped response. So overdamped response is shown in the bottom left. This is a response which is rising very slow. Okay, very slowly it is rising. And it will be reaching the peak value that is 1, final value, after quite a lot of time. So these four responses I can ask you as a theory. So what is the value of zeta and what is the response and what is the response parameters and how does it look? So you have to draw all these four diagrams. Though it is not drawn in the sequence, I'm sorry for that. Uh, so below uh, right is the zeta is equal to zero. Top left is uh, zeta in between zero to one. Uh, top right is zeta is equal to one and bottom left is zeta greater than one. So is it understood, Vinay? Yes, sir. Okay, so these four responses can be asked uh, in your exam. Now, uh, all the theory and all these things are written here. And uh, depending on the pole position, actually, uh, the response changes. So here that omega d is shown. Omega d is a damped response. So damped response kab aata hai? When zeta is in between 0 and 1. So zeta can be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And you find here, can you just tell me when omega d will vanish? When will omega d become 0? Can you just tell me looking at this diagram and looking at this equation? What is the value of zeta for which omega d will vanish? Omega d will become zero. So one. So if zeta is equal to one, so what is one? It is called as critical damping. Okay. So zeta is equal to zero. That is the maximum oscillation. That is called as uh, undamped. Or uh, sorry, that is undamped oscillation. That is the highest amount of frequency that will be produced. So at zeta is equal to zero. If zeta you are increasing slowly, you will be finding that omega d is coming into the play. And omega d value actually is decreasing if zeta is kept on increasing. So omega d, that is damped oscillation. That means actually oscillation decreases if zeta increases. So remember one thing that oscillation means instability. Not system is unstable, but thartara, that means more amount of energy is input to the system. 
and the system has started oscillating. So as you are increasing the value of zeta, as you are increasing the value of r, as zeta is increasing. So this is the whole understanding of RLC system. So if you are increasing the R, actually you are increasing stability of the system. You are increasing the value of zeta. And in that case, you will be finding that the energy in the system is reducing. You are inputting the energy, but you are increasing the resistance. That means opposition to the energy is more. That means that energy that you are inputting to the system, that is not able to increase the overall energy of the system because you are increasing the opposition. So more is the value of R, more is the opposition, more is the value of zeta damping less is uh, the gain less is the energy which is absorbed by the uh, l and c component l and c component they absorb energy and they generate that instability but if r value is more in that case l and c they cannot absorb more energy so this is the significance so when zeta is equal to one uh, initially zeta was zero system was oscillatory response that is omega in highest frequency uh, then zeta value increased a little bit with the value of r. Then omega n value reduced to omega d. That means oscillation is reducing. Oscillation is reducing the system is going to stability. And then uh, finally zeta is equal to 1. Zeta is equal to 1 means r is equal to 2. R value further increased. In that case, we are finding there is no oscillation. So the waveform is like a kind of a step input. So that is uh, closest resemblance of the input to the output. And further you are increasing the value of R, you will be finding that zeta value increases further. And system rises very slow. System rises very slow means damping is more, gain is less, and stability is more. So these are the four explanations you have to give. And pole positions we are not doing here uh, because that is another study. Obviously, we are not doing it now, but yes, we will do it in the course of the uh, this uh, uh, course. So in the maybe in the fourth chapter. Because there, when we are doing root locus, I definitely have to tell you uh, the position of pole and stability. So we'll do that. Okay. So only pole positions you can see here in the diagram that uh, what is the position of the pole. So you're finding here that the position of the pole is like this. So it's an imaginary kind of a pole. Okay. In the left side of S plane, in that case, the system will be under damped. So whenever zeta is equal to 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, in that case, the poles will be in the left side. And it will not be on real axis. It will be on the imaginary axis. And this is a very important thing. This will be the first point of discussion in root locus. That is uh, when uh, there is something called as breakaway point. Again, I will come there. I will tell you that, yes, we had studied this thing in uh, third chapter. Uh, so breakaway point is where two poles. So here only two poles are there. Two poles will come and uh, they collide on the same point on the real axis. So is it understood that this uh, these two poles are real pole and uh, they are on the same point? Is it understood? Yes, sir. Okay, so minus sigma plus minus j omega. So in this case, you are finding how is this pole? So minus 2 plus minus j3. So one pole is at suppose minus 2 plus j3. Another pole is there at minus 2 minus j3. So pole positions are different. But whenever you are reducing that imaginary part, okay, so in this case, I can say minus omega n is equal to minus 2 minus 2. So where are the poles? Poles are at minus 2, minus 2. In that case, the response will be as I had shown you for critical damping. So what is the response of critical damping? The response of critical damping is like this. Okay. So minus 2 plus J3, that is the under damped response. Okay. Minus 2, minus 2, that is real pole. And on the same position, there is a critical damped response. Uh, what is the response of uh, this thing? Uh, what will happen in case of this thing? That is uh, undamped omega n. So in that case, you will find that both poles are on J omega axis. So is it visible on the top S12 plus minus J omega n? Okay, so when the both the poles are on J omega axis, so real part is zero. Imaginary part zero hai, and both the poles are on same position means it's critical damp. So all this thing comes with uh, calculation only. So this is the first case top. This is the critical damping case. Both real poles on the same position in the left hand side of S plane. And left hand side of S plane means a system are stable. So all the four responses are kind, uh, not fourth response, but first, second, third, all the three responses are stable. What is the first response? First response is oscillatory. That means it is going towards instability, but it is not unstable because still the poles are in the left hand side of S plane. Next is both the poles are on real poles. So real poles are more stable. Okay, so both the poles are on real. Uh, there is no imaginary part. That means there is no oscillation. So pole shifts to the imaginary side. That means there comes oscillation. Okay, in this case, you are finding both poles on a real axis. So oscillation will not come. So minus 2 plus minus J3. So minus sigma plus minus J omega. 
in this case that g omega part is equal to zero <clears throat> you are finding all letters minus sigma that means uh, in this case it is a critical damping zeta is equal to one and in this case the response will be like the almost like a straight response this is a significance very fast and actually third case you are finding another case so two real poles but two real poles are not on same position one pole is suppose at minus two and another pole is at minus five so this is actually the response of a over damped system over damped system is bottom left you are finding it's a very slow system so if i show you this is a second order system response step response and i can ask you what are the pole positions you have to say it is at uh, minus at s1 or s1 and s2 both are negative whereas you can find here in the top case critical damp both the poles are on same position uh, for under damped you are finding both the poles are in the left side and they are in a uh, in the imaginary axis as well and last case which is actually called as critically uh, stable or marginally stable it is not unstable the bottom right uh, that is the undamped response uh, this is not uh, unstable but this is not stable either because the poles are on geomega axis okay so this is called as a marginally stable response so kya kya aata hai isme pehla aata hai zeta सेकेंड आता है ओमेगा एन थर्ड आता है स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स एंड फोर्थ आता है पोल पोजीशन ये चार चीज ऑल दिस फोर थिंग्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर एंड इट कम्स थ्रू अंडरस्टैंडिंग ओनली इफ यू अंडरस्टैंड प्रॉपरली दैट व्हाट इज द ओमेगा एन व्हाट इज द जीटा एंड व्हाट इज द स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स रिस्पॉन्स फोर रिस्पॉन्स आर ड्रॉन एंड व्हाट इज द पोल पोजिशन सो डिपेंडिंग ऑन योर ओमेगा एन एंड जीटा द पोल पोजिशन इज डिसाइडेड एंड डिपेंडिंग ऑन द पोल पोजिशन द स्टेप रिस्पॉन्स इज डिसाइडेड so we know what is cs by rs so cs by rs is 1 by lc divided by s square plus r by ls plus 1 by lc then rs you take to the right side so cs become rs into that transfer function and rs you substitute as uh, 1 by s because unit step ka laplace transform hota hai 1 by s and then you do all this uh, multiplication and uh, partial fraction and all those things and you find so this is the process i'm telling you so this derivation is also not there but tum jaan ke rakho kya hota hai uh, is it understandable we know so far yes sir okay so cs by rs equal to omega n square plus s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n this is what this is the second order standard system generalized transfer function and what is cs by rs cs is the output rs is the input which response are we talking about we are talking about step response that means rs is equal to 1 by s is understandable so cs is the output rs is the input now what we are doing is cs by rs equal to omega n square and ye jo denominator hai isko tum do part mein divide karo so they are actually the poles okay and you are finding both poles are negative so what is the pole here s plus zeta omega n plus j omega n what is the pole here minus zeta omega n minus j omega n root under of 1 minus zeta square and omega n into root under of 1 minus zeta square is equal to omega d So what are the poles? Minus zeta omega n. Uh, Ikan yaha pe uh, minus zeta omega n minus j omega d. And right side, this is minus zeta omega n plus j omega d. So that is minus two plus minus j three. That kind of a thing. Now I am coming to the main part. That is Cs by Rs is given. Now what you do is Rs is equal to one by S. Now this line is very important. The top line which is there at your page, is it understandable? So omega n square divided by s plus this, s plus this. Now what is this s? So R s I have taken to the right side and R s I have substituted as one by s. Question is why have I substituted R s as one by s? Because which response are we talking about? We are talking about step response. Step response means amplitude one. If I said two into unit step response, that is amplitude two. Three into step response, amplitude is three. So if I say what is the Laplace transform of three of step response? Laplace transform will be three by s. But here we are inputting unit step to the input. So whenever it is unit step input, it is written in the top. Unit step input means U T is equal to unit step. So R S is equal to one by S. So what was C S by R S? C S by R S was omega n square divided by S square plus two zeta omega n S plus uh, omega n square. Now there C S by R S. R S you have taken to the right side, and R S you have substituted as one by S. ये समझ में आया? Yes sir. Okay, now when you are getting CS, what is meant by CS? CS is the response. CS is the voltage across capacitor that is in Laplace domain. If you have to inverse transform, then you are going to get a CT. So I give you any input. Now one thing I told you, if you remember, 
in case of a transfer function a positive point that is cs by rs when we are finding we don't know what is the type of input given to the system okay so once we find cs by rs after that we shift the rs to the right side and there we incorporate what is the type of rs so if input is unit step rs will be 1 by s if input is ram then rs will be 1 by s square okay input is suppose parabolic then rs will be 1 by s cube likewise it will go so what response we are doing here is unit step response hence we have taken cs by rs was this so rs have taken right side and rs have substituted as 1 by s so in that case uh, this is what second line is written you can see cs is equal to omega n square into rs divided by s square plus 2 zeta omega n s plus omega n square and actually ye line upar aana chahiye tha and then i have substituted rs is equal to 1 by s and then i am substituting omega n into root under of 1 by uh, 1 minus zeta square is equal to omega d so now you are finding cs is this and directly if you are taking all those inverse laplace transform and all finally you will end up at this equation so this proof is not there but i am just showing you uh, finally you will end up at this equation okay so what is the equation ct is equal to so what is meant by ct cha to likh ke rakho ct is the uh, step response of the system okay and what is that 1 minus e raised to minus zeta omega nt divided by root under of 1 minus zeta square into sin omega dt plus alpha so this line is very important and this is actually called as the step response of second order system okay so and what is the second order system with us rlc what are the parameters you don't know in this equation do you know what is zeta in terms of rlc yes or no just pull just tell me whether it is yes or no do you know what is zeta in terms of rlc are you there vinay uh, yes sir so can you tell me what is zeta so zeta is equal to r by 2 root under of c by l right yes sir what is omega n omega n is 1 by root lc so we know all the parameters in the numerator in terms of rlc time jo time mein humko output nikalne ko bolega that will be time sometime he can say find output at 10 seconds in that case t will be 10 what i am trying to prove is you know all the parameters in this equation in terms of circuit parameter r l and c so what is the c ct ct is called as step response of rlc uh, system at any given time voltage kitna hai how much is the voltage across capacitor at any given time okay that you can calculate so what is one one is a constant zeta zeta is a constant system constant that is r by 2 root under of c by l omega n is a constant omega n is equal to 1 by root lc omega d what is omega d this is omega n root under of 1 minus zeta square you know what is omega n you know what is zeta only thing you don't know is alpha okay so alpha is uh, tan inverse root under of 1 minus zeta square divided by zeta so is there any term in this equation of ct which you cannot calculate if rlc is given so from rlc value if i give you can you calculate every parameter in this system yes or no Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, so, sir. So, all the formula you have to remember. Omega n is one by root lc. First formula, second formula is zeta is equal to r by two root under of c by l. That's all. Okay. And all the uh, 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 angles you are calculating, everything has to be calculated in radian. Okay. Degree me kuch nahi calculate hota hai. Everything will be calculated in radian. So now this is a more purified equation. That is one minus e raised to. So ye equation yaad rakho. Ham logo ko ye padhate padhate yaad ho gaya. So one minus e raised to minus zeta omega n t root under of one minus zeta square sine omega d t plus tan inverse of one minus zeta square by zeta. So what is the thing you don't know? You know zeta. So if you know zeta, if you know omega n, omega d is nothing but omega n into root under of one minus zeta. So everything. at any instant t you can calculate how much is going to be the output voltage uh, at capacitor okay so this is the output response of second order under damped system with step input obviously if step input is given then only this is the response if i give ramp input where will the change come if i give ramp input if i give the ramp input then this denominator okay so what is the ramp uh, laplace transform so in that case it will be 1 by s square in that case cs will be omega n square divided by this s will become s square now 
Okay, so this S will become a square in the denominator and uh, then all these things. So in that case, you're not going to get the same CT as you are finding here. So if input changes, then the response CT or CS, it changes. Okay, <clears throat> so this formula will you be able to remember? That is 1 minus it is 2 minus zeta omega and t, root under of 1 minus zeta square, sine omega dt, omega d is omega and root under of 1 minus zeta square, plus tan inverse root 1 minus zeta square by zeta. Okay, so this kind of formula, if you can write in the interviews, it actually impresses the interview taker like anything. And it's may bada baat kuch nahi hai. So it is 2 minus zeta omega and t, zeta into omega and, and uh, denominator root under of 1 minus zeta square. Sirf ek bar dekh ke dimaag mein fit karna hai isko. So this, uh, just one second. So we have to fit it in our mind. That is the only thing. And this is actually the output response of second order underdamped system. That is very important thing. Okay. That is, this is the response of underdamped system uh, when zeta is in between 0 to 1. So now this is the, the diagram which we have already discussed and whatever graph, whatever equation I'm giving you, this equation is actually degenerating this kind of graph. And what are the parameters? I told you there are five parameters, four are amplitude parameter and one is the time parameter. And here the TD is shown. Okay, so this is the starting point, this is a zero amplitude. Uh, when the amplitude is uh, risen up to 50% or 0.5, this time is called as TD. When the amplitude is risen up to 100% for the first time, this time is called as TR, rise time. When the amplitude is risen to the peak, maximum, and I told you that this maximum, we should design in such a way that it should not cross 1.4. That will become dangerously high and that will make the system unstable. Accident ho jayega, gaadi ka. Because there's the same for MBK system. And a vehicle, you can represent as MBK system. Whatever we have studied in the module one. Okay, MBK, mass, spring, and damper. Okay, so for that also, that's also a second order system. For that, this formula of zeta and omega will be a little different. Okay. Uh, but uh, the fundamental is same. So we should not uh, design systems. So RLC we should design in such a way that the percentage MP should be less than uh, 40%. That means the peak amplitude should be less than 1.4. 1.3 to be safe. Okay, so TP peak time is something. A TS, so here I told you there are uh, two uh, settling time. So the waveform is reducing, reducing, reducing when it enters the 5% band. So 5% band is nothing but 0.95 to 1.05. So when the oscillation is amplitude is in between 0.95 to 1.95 band, means it has got stabled up to 95%. Then again, further the amplitude is reducing and it is entering the 2% band. 2% band means the system has stabilized by 98%. That means 0.98 up to 1.02. When the oscillation is in between that range, uh, like this. So there are two uh, times of... Uh, uh, settling that is 5% uh, TS, TS 5% is given by 3 by zeta omega n, uh, TS 2% uh, is given by 4 by zeta omega n, uh, likewise. So it is said that at this point, the response went inside the 2% error band. So this is the point where uh, this is called as 2% settling time, the 2% error band is shown here. So below it is 0.98 and above it is 1.02. And if you are saying it is 5% settling time, that means this below is 0.95 and above is 1.05. Okay. So when the response settles within 2% error band and it stayed inside it, hence from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to ts is called as a 2% settling time. Now I'm coming to something which I did not tell you previously. It's coming proof push there, but we are not going to do it. You can find it in the book of M. Gopal. Uh, what is the formula of TD? Delay time. What is the amplitude of delay time? 50% uh, of uh, the unit step. Okay. Now, if I tell you that I give two unit step, if I give that input as two unit step, so you can see here it is one, input is one. Okay, so if I give two in unit step, in that case, delay time will be amplitude one. Is it understandable? Yes, sir. Okay, if I give you three, input as three unit step, in that case, this delay time will be 1.5. Okay, so that you have to understand. Proportionately, it will increase. So what is meant by delay time? So delay time is when the uh, system output is half of the input given. The input is given is one, that means delay time is kitna time mein wo 0.5 tak jayega. 
and this is also given by two design parameters that's what i was telling you always that there are only two design parameters one is omega n one by root lc and one is zeta that is r by 2 root of c by l and everything has to be calculated in a radian okay so can you calculate what is td if i give you rlc yes sir so rlc se tumko zeta find karna hai rlc se omega n find karna hai from there and what is the smallest time td sabse chota hai usse thoda bada hai tr usse thoda bada hai tp and sabse bada hai 2% settling time so sequence is like this if you see the graph also at the top sabse chota hai td then usse thoda bada hai tr usse thoda bada hai tp little bit bigger than that is 5% ts and sabse bada time hai 2% ts so 2% ts is generally we call as a settling time or uh, almost the settling time of the system what is the rise time tr it is the time taken by the response so what we ask is define the time and uh, write down the formula and calculate it so uh, pi minus theta okay so what is theta theta already was shown in the previous equation tan inverse root under of 1 minus zeta square by zeta and all this has to be calculated in a radian degree ka koi sthan nahi hai okay remember that there is no uh, place for degree in all this equation so pi means how much can you tell me when pi means how much in radian tumhara calc mein operate hota hai so pi in radian is actually 3.14 okay and pi in degree is 180 degree so we write pi radian is equal to 180 degree and what is the symbol of radian it's a small c ओके सो ये सब पता है कि नहीं यस सर ओके सो सिंबल ऑफ रेडियन इज अ स्मॉल सी ओके सो पाई रेडियन स्मॉल सी इज इक्वल टू 180 डिग्री सो हियर दिस पाई इज एक्चुअली 3.14 सो बिफोर यू आर डूइंग दिस काइंड ऑफ न्यूमेरिकल्स सो सम 4 5 न्यूमेरिकल्स वी विल सी टुडे ऑल आर सॉल्वड हियर those are the numericals only you solve and come for the exam i'm not saying i'll be asking from that but yes if you solve this numerical Uh, the same kind of numerical generally you ask in the exam. So what is the value of theta? Theta is tan inverse of root under of one minus zeta square by zeta. Okay. So uh, zeta is uh, uh, not having any unit. Omega n is having unit of uh, radian per second, and theta is having unit in radian. Okay. So whenever you are calculating all this numerical in a second order step response, please keep your calci in radian mode. if you are keeping your calc in degree then you will be mistaken so this is the uh, calculation where student make most of the mistake tr uh, and theta calculation also if go, it goes wrong then everything will be wrong so be careful peak time peak time is pi by omega d how much is the value of pi sir in here how much is the value of pi second so अभी तो बोला मैं पाई इज थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर राइट पाई इज ट्वेंटी होना चाहिए राइट पाई इज थ्री पॉइंट वन फोर एंड ओमेगा डी वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट एंड ओमेगा डी इज ओमेगा इन टू रूट अंडर ऑफ वन माइनस जीटा स्क्वायर सो फर्स्ट थिंग एज सुन एज आई गिव यू अर ट्रांसफर फंक्शन यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट ओमेगा डी ओमेगा एन ऑल दो थिंग्स सेटलिंग टाइम फोर डिवाइडेड बाई जीटा ओमेगा एन सो इफ आई एम सेंग इट इज टू परसेंट सेटलिंग टाइम टू परसेंट सेटलिंग टाइम ज्यादा होता है Uh, because the waveform is almost a ninety-eight percent stable, okay. So it is four by zeta omega n, and five percent settling time is three by zeta omega n. Peak overshoot, peak overshoot. ये याद रखो कि one के ऊपर वो कितना जाएगा? If above one, it is going up to one point three. That means percentage peak overshoot is thirty percent. This is how you have to remember that. Okay. So peak overshoot is the maximum peak value of the response measured from the input signal one. Okay, so one ki upper kitna gaya? That is actually peak overshoot. It is also the maximum error between input and output response. It is generally given in terms of percentage of the input. So MP is equal to e raised to e raised to. So here I have written a little mistake. So e raised to minus pi zeta divided by root number of one minus zeta square. So here also pi value is three point one four. So pi in radian is three point one four. So smaller value of TS, TP, TD, TR means faster. the transient response of faster is the system this specifications occur during the transient response which is called as a under damped step response uh, steady state response starts after ts so after the 2% uh, 
uh, settling time, the steady state response occurs. Now let us solve some numerical, let us see some numerical. Uh, here, I can give you this kind of uh, system transfer function. And then I can ask you all the question. So first, what is the question? I've given you CS by RS, okay? So is equal to one by S square plus S plus one. So what all things you can calculate from here? So first thing you have to say that you have to compare it with omega n square divided by S square plus two zeta omega n s plus omega n square. So your finding is omega n is equal to one radian per second. This is called as a normalized system. Okay, so omega n is equal to one means normalized system. That is, it's having resonance frequency is equal to one radian per second. And how much is the damping? Damping, you have to again uh, compare. So below two zeta omega n is equal to one. So the top uh, equation, that is S square plus S plus one. Here, the coefficient of S is equal to one. And below the standard equation, the coefficient of X is S is two zeta omega n. So this two zeta, zeta omega less than one means under damp. Zeta greater than one means over damp, no sir. Uh, Okay. Zeta is equal to one is critical damped. Zeta greater than one is over damped. Zeta less than one is under damped. Yes. So one is the criticality point. Greater than one is over system is slow. Less than one is under system is fast. Zeta can be zero. That is called as undamped. Okay. So generally we ask uh, under damped system only because over damped system, critical damped system, they are not having all these oscillations and all this. Uh, time specifications. So whatever system you are response you are finding and whenever you are drawing this kind of numerical yes, system response to code draw karna hai, whether we ask or not. After you find all these details as a response draw karo, roughly you draw and you have to make it clear that at every instant amplitude is reducing. As a chahiye, the second peak is greater than the first peak or third peak is second the greater than the second peak. As a name, it is damped oscillation. Damped means gradually it is reducing. Amplitude of the uh, response is reducing gradually. And there you show TD, TR, TP, TS and percentage MP. And TS also you can show there 2% TS and 5% TS. So six specification generally uh, you can find out. Plus you have to find out what is omega n and what is zeta. So mainly eight calculations is there. Is this calculation understood? That is omega n square is equal to one, omega n is equal to one. And two zeta omega n is equal to one because uh, the top transfer function characteristic equation, S is having coefficient one. The bottom transfer function characteristic equation, S is having coefficient as two zeta omega n. So two zeta omega n is equal to one. That means two zeta is equal to one. That means zeta is equal to 0.5. As soon as you are finding zeta is equal to 0.5, you have to say that the system is under damped. So if you are having a uh, calcium and all, you can check all these calculations now. So as soon as uh, we find two things, so here two things first you find. Karna. What is omega n? So for this numerical, omega n is 1. And for this numerical, zeta is equal to 0.5. Now very fast, you can check all this calculation. I'm giving you two to three minutes. Very fast, you can check all this calculation. So first check what is uh, omega. So zeta or omega n calculation Yes, sir. All calculations are the sir, actually. Okay. So there is nothing difficult in that. Time only thing is... Execution. It's fine, sir. It seems simple. Yeah. So only thing is, it is very simple. Only thing is, you have to do all these calculations in radian. So I have done it in degree and then converted radian. That is not a good practice because I was trying to be more uh, easy to the students. But directly, if you uh, do all these things in radian, so this time, pi by 3, Okay, so pi by 3, if you do, it is actually 3.14 divided by 3. That means it will be around 1.04 something. Okay, so here you are finding 1.047 seconds. So directly, this answer will come. So this is very easy actually, and 10 marks uh, we give, but it is not that difficult. So this is the first numerical. So there are variations. So 2% settling time you are finding. So first you should find 3% settling time. Okay, you are going to in an ascending manner. So first you have to find TD, smallest then uh, TR, little more, then TP, further, a uh, little higher time, Y, and then you are finding 5% settling time, so you are finding it 6 seconds, then 2% settling times, it is 8 seconds, finally you are supposed to find out percentage MP. So if you are finding percentage MP, you are finding it is to be 0.16, and then you multiply it with 100. You sub step acche se dekhna, do thin numerical practice kar lena, you will understand everything. Suddenly, oh, percentage kaan se aage? 
परसेंटेज ऐसा आता है बिकॉज दिस आंसर यू विल फाइंड एक्चुअली एस वन पॉइंट वन सिक्स और मे बी पॉइंट वन सिक्स वो चीज चेक कर लो तो मतलब पॉइंट वन सिक्स मल्टीप्लाई हंड्रेड विद दैट सो दैट विल गिव यू सिक्सटीन पॉइंट थ्री परसेंट दैट मीन्स हाउ मच इज द पीक एक्चुअली पीक इज वन के ऊपर पॉइंट वन सिक्स दैट मीन्स द एक्चुअल एम्पलीट्यूड इज वन पॉइंट वन सिक्स इज इट अंडरस्टैंडेबल सिंपल सर ओके so this is one type of the numerical next type is a 25 divided by a square plus 6 is plus 25 so as soon as i am giving you 25 omega n square that means omega n is equal to 5 and the 6 is equal to 2 into zeta into 5 that means zeta is coming to be 0.6 as soon as you find zeta and omega n first job is to find omega d next job is to find theta okay and theta you have found out 0.927 radians so ye char cheez pehle find out karna hai That is zeta, omega n, uh, omega d, and theta. Once all these four things are calculated, then next six things. Okay, that is T D, T R, T P, two percent T S, five percent T S, and M P. So, ये छः जो है ये result है, and previous four things जो है वो result का ingredient. So that's why this numerical is asked for ten marks. And after you are finding uh, all these time parameters, what you have to do is uh, you have to uh, draw a second order response. and there you have to mark uh, all this uh, time specification so that actually ends your numerical and then i can ask you find or write down the equation of ct okay so this is another thing i ask so what is the equation of ct 1 minus e raised to minus zeta omega nt so you know what is zeta 0.6 you know what is omega n that is 5 root under of 1 minus zeta square e will flow sin omega dt plus theta so you already have calculate omega d is equal to 4 a uh, radian per second theta is equal to 0.927 so now uh, e raised to uh, minus point so if this is raised to minus 3 divided by root under of this so if you do this is the equation of ct now if i ask you at any time at any time suppose bol okay after uh, 15 seconds whether the system is a transient or steady state so from your understanding that is uh, 5% settling time is uh, uh, 6 seconds uh, A two percent settling time is eight seconds. That means, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, that means total settling time will be zeta into omega. Okay, so one open that. So you'll be finding if I ask you, tell a hundred seconds my amplitude, but so amplitude will be peak amplitude. Okay, so you can substitute here hundred. Okay, as as e raised to minus three t, as t value higher you are substituting, e raised to minus three t will become less. so in that case for very high value of t you will find that the second whole second part will become almost equal to 0 that means ct will be equal to 1 ye samajh mein aa raha hai yes sir lesser is the value of t higher will be the value of the subtracted component okay and higher is the value of t e raised to minus 3 will be less and less and less so in that case the second term will become almost equal to 0 if the second term is almost equal to 0 means ct is equal to One input we have given one, output CT also we are getting as one. That means the system has reached steady state. And what is the smallest time to reach steady state? Remember, it is given by five divided by zeta omega n. ये थोड़ा याद रखना. So three divided by zeta omega n is five percent settling time. Uh, four divided by zeta omega n is two percent settling time. And uh, five divided by zeta omega n में system almost uh, steady state में जाता है. ये कोई book में लिखा नहीं है, but there is a thumb rule. नेक्स्ट इज थोड़ा फिरकी है ये न्यूमेरिकल दिस न्यूमेरिकल इज सेम न्यूमेरिकल बट हियर देर इज अस्ट वट इज अस्ट आई एम नॉट गिविंग यू सी एस बाई आर एस डायरेक्टली वट आई एम गिविंग यू इज जी एस एंड आई टोल्ड यू टू थिंग्स वन इज कॉल्ड एज ओपन लुक ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एंड वन इज कॉल्ड एज अ क्लोज लुक ट्रांसफर फंक्शन सो सी एस बाई आर एस इज एक्चुअली अ क्लोज लुक ट्रांसफर फंक्शन एंड हियर वट आई हैव गिवन यू इज अटी फीडबैक सिस्टम वट इज मीन यूनिटी फीडबैक सिस्टम एच एस इक्वल टू वन because hs is our uh, feedback gain and gs equal to k divided by s into s plus 10 so gs is given hs is given what is the closed loop transfer function cs by rs it is g by 1 plus gh samajh mein aa raha so that is the twist here i am not giving you cs by rs directly okay so ye numerical bahut acha numerical hai thoda firki hai isme aage ka process same hai Okay, but initially I have given some twist. So I have seen many books and different types of numerical I have collected and put in my notes. Sir, okay, so uh, here, the yeah, FS is not there. 
सब दिया हुआ है so h is equal to 1 g is equal to k by s into s plus 10 gain k okay so k is something which is not known to wo tumko design karna hai so ye bahut uh, acha numerical hai so here i am giving you k so k is what is a dc gain so this is a external gain i can put in the system okay and uh, now cs by rs so g s is k by s into s plus 10 h is equal to 1 so find what is the Closed loop transfer function first, and that will come in the terms of k only. K का बहुत बड़ा significance है. As we go in the root law का fourth chapter, हम find करेंगे कि k का बहुत बड़ा significance है. Okay, so अभी CS by RS समझ में आया? How to find CS by RS from GS and HS? Yes, sir. This is easy. हम पूरा हम पूरा second chapter में वही कर रहे थे, right? So CS by RS equal to GS by one plus GS HS. Put everything in properly. Then you are finding CS by RS is k divided by s square plus 10s plus k. So one doubt, yes, sir. Hmm. Uh, sorry to ask, sir. Like open loop transfer function and closed loop transfer function. Um, open loop transfer function is GS into HS. Just multiply GS and HS. That's all. Okay. And closed loop is GO, GS by one plus GS HS. Correct. Oh, CLTF and OLTF. ये सब दिया हुआ था देखो. ठीक है. So just multiply GS and HS. उसका कोई physical significance नहीं है. उसका physical significance नेक्स्ट चैप्टर में समझेगा बट इट्स अ वेरी हेल्पफुल क्वांटिटी इन रूट लोकस एंड बोडे प्लॉट एंड ऑल सो जस्ट जीएस एंड एचएस इज गिवन टू यू इफ दिस इज द सिस्टम फॉरवर्ड के दिस इज द सिस्टम फीडबैक के उससे अगर हम लोग एक क्लोज लूप फीडबैक सिस्टम बनाए तो दैट सिस्टम वुड बी स्टेबल और अनस्टेबल अभी समझ में आया आई हैव गिवन यू अ सिस्टम आई हैव गिवन यू अ ट्रांसफर फंक्शन जीएस एंड आई हैव गिवन यू अ फीडबैक कंपोनेंट एचएस नाउ इफ वी मिक्स देम एंड प्रिपेयर अ फीडबैक सिस्टम क्लोज लूप नेगेटिव फीडबैक वेदर दैट सिस्टम विल बी स्टेबल ओ बनाया नहीं मैंने सिस्टम बट इफ आई मेक अ सिस्टम विद देम क्लोज लूप नहीं नॉट ऑलवेज इट विल बी स्टेबल सो दैट वी विल सी ऑब्वियसली इट विल नॉट नेसेसरी नॉट नेसेसरी नेगेटिव फीडबैक इज नॉट ऑलवेज स्टेबल बिकॉज़ इट डिपेंड्स ऑन द वैल्यू ऑफ के के इज एक्सटर्नल गेन वी आर गिविंग इन द सिस्टम हां हां तो बहुत कुछ है गेन इंक्रीज सर गेन विल इंक्रीज ऑब्वियसली यस इफ द गेन इंक्रीजेस Correct. If the gain increases, so k ka value kitna hona chahiye. So there will come a boundary value of k. Below that value of k, closed loop system would be stable. Above the value of k, the closed loop system will become unstable. And we will find that. Suppose I say k is equal to ten. Just take marginal value. So below the k value ten, you will find that all system poles will lie in the left hand side of the plane. And as soon as the k value crosses ten. k value becomes 11 to about 10.5 you will find that all the poles will go in the right hand side of the plane and right hand side pole means system is unstable and when the k is equal to 10 you will find that all the poles are lying on the geometric axis so we are heading for the most interesting part in control system so itna din hum jo dekhte the these were the curtain raiser now we are going to enter the The real uh, control system from fourth chapter or यही chapter में आएगा यही chapter में towards end when we'll be doing that Rauth Hurwitz criterion and all these things there the concept of K will come okay so अभी समझ में आया open loop control system open loop gain closed loop gain all those things understood sir clear okay so open loop transfer function is GS into HS उसका कोई significance नहीं है just GS ले लो HS ले लो multiply Closed loop system का transfer function का significance है because it is GS by RS. It is GS by one plus GS HS and as this is unity feedback system, CS by RS is GS by one plus GS because HS equal to one. That means K by S into S plus ten. So if you are doing that, you are finding CS by RS to be K by S square plus ten S plus K. That means K is equal to root omega n and two zeta omega n is equal to ten. Okay, ये दिया हुआ है. So uh, we, it is given that zeta is equal to uh, Uh, 0.5. So in that case, how much is the omega n? So any numerical, देखो, okay. So what what all things are given? I will read the numerical that uh, decide how much is going to be the value of k. So the damping ratio will be 0.5. That means zeta will be 
0.5. So k decides damping. This is a very important thing. More is the value of k, you will be finding zeta is less. Okay. And zeta tumne badate gay, to k value will reduce because damping and stability, they are directly proportional. Damping and gain, they are inversely proportional. So what they have said is for this value of k, find time and amplitude specification. So first you have to find k uh, from the value of zeta. And here zeta we know, zeta is equal to 0.5. So 2 into 0.5 into omega is equal to 10. Okay, because you are finding here Cs by R is equal to this 10s. So omega n is equal to root k. That is the first equation. And 2 zeta omega n is equal to 10. And zeta is told as 0.5. So 2 into 0.5 is 1. That means omega n is equal to 10. That means uh, omega n square, that is k, that is equal to 100. That means actual transfer function is 100 divided by a square plus 10s plus 100. Okay, so this is what it is. And from there, you are supposed to find out all these things. So once you know zeta, once you know omega n, then other things are customary. All these things you can calculate. So you are finding omega d is 8.66. You are finding theta is 1.047 radian. TR, TR is smallest time, 0.242 seconds. A TD, actually, sorry, TD should uh, be calculated first. This is 0.135. TR is 0.242. TP is uh, 0.36. That is peak time. 2% settling time is 0.8, 5% settling time is 0.6, and percentage overshoot is 16.3%. So this is the most uh, amazing numerical that is here as a part of this. Then also there are some other numericals. So this numerical fourth, fifth, you uh, sabtum karo, and if there is any doubt, we will ask in the, uh, we will address that in the second time. So numerical four, fifth, sixth, and I think seventh is there. So that 